Running an online store isn't simply a case of uploading your products once, sitting back and then hoping they sell. As a store owner, you'll need to continuously think of new ways to entice customers to purchase your products. In this lesson, we're going to teach you a few basic marketing techniques which you can apply to your store to help push your sales higher and higher. We'll first create a pop-up. Next, we'll take a look at the inbuilt featured products option. This will allow us to make specific products stand out which we're trying to push the sales on. Finally, we'll create a dedicated sales page for a single product. So if you're ready, let's get started and take your store to the next level. The first marketing element we're going to add to our website is a pop-up. Pop-ups are a great way to inform customers of important announcements. You can use them on your store to promote products, provide recommendations, collect visitor information and much more. The key is timing your pop-ups so that they are helpful and not annoying. Nobody likes to be inundated with lots of pop-ups when viewing a website. So strategically plan yours to ensure that they provide value to your customers. In our example of using a pop-up on an online store, we're going to create one which shows just once when a visitor comes to our website. The pop-up will display a prompt for them to sign up to our newsletter and the reward for this will be a 10% discount off their first order. Let's head over to the pop-ups area and create our first store pop-up. We'll name ours Newsletter Prompt. You can, of course, choose a template from the library to get started if you so wish, but we'll create ours from scratch, so let's dismiss the library. Before we add any content, let's configure some general pop-up settings by selecting the gear icon. Set the width to 50VH and leave the height as fit to content. You can amend this to fit to screen or custom height though if required. We'll leave the default position rules as we'd like our pop-up to show directly in the middle of the screen. And we'll also leave the overlay and close buttons as show. Set the animations to fade in and fade out. Then in the style tab, set a background image for the pop-up. Set the position, attachment, repeat and size. The overlay will leave as default. And in the close button tab, set the color and size of the close button. Finally, in the advanced tab, add 5% padding to all sides. Okay, great. Now let's add some content. Add a new one column section and then drop in a heading widget. Amend the text and the styles. Duplicate the heading, amend the text and then the styles. Add in our divider image and now add in a contact form. Give the form a name, remove the message field, amend the input size to medium and hide the label. Now amend the size of the button and the text. We'll come back to this section shortly to finalize our form settings, but for now, switch to the style tab and amend the text color to secondary, background color to white, border width to zero, and border radius to zero. Now under the button styles, set the typography, background color, border radius, and hover color. Switching back to the content tab now, let's finish fine tuning our form settings. Open actions after submit, and by default, our form will automatically be added to our submissions database, as well as email to the admin email address. If you select the plus icon, you'll see a whole host of additional options. These inbuilt elemental features can be a great time saver, as they allow you to integrate your form with many third party providers, as well as additional pop-up settings, redirections, and additional emails. For example, if you use MailChimp, you could connect this form to your MailChimp account. And every time a visitor fills in this form, they'll automatically be added to your mailing list. For more information about integrating Elementor forms with third-party services, please check out the detailed instructions in our documentation.
In our example, we're going to keep things simple by storing the submitted form in our submission database, which we can then manually add to a mailing list at a later stage. We'll also set up an automatic email, which is sent to the customer, providing them with the 10% discount code. And finally, we'll configure this pop-up to close once the form has been submitted. There aren't any configurations to be made with the submissions, so let's move on to the automatic email. We'll remove the default email address here first of all. Then we need to insert a shortcode into this field so that when the form is submitted, the email is sent to the customer. To do this, open the Form Fields tab, then select Email, Advanced, and copy the shortcode. Now paste this shortcode into the To field. This will now dynamically populate this field with whichever email address has been entered on the front end of our website. Next, amend the title of the email, and then add your message. Scrolling down, you'll see that we can also control the from name, email address, as well as the reply to, CC, and BCC if required. We'll leave these all default for our form. Finally, open the pop-up tab, and under action, set this to close pop-up. This means that once the form has been submitted, the pop-up will automatically close and the customer can continue browsing through our website. If we now select Publish, we're automatically taken to the Display Condition window. Here we can define the exact display settings for our pop-up. We would like to display our pop-up just once to first-time visitors. Select Add Condition and leave it as the default entire site. This way the pop-up will show to first-time visitors regardless of which page they land on first. Now under Triggers, enable On-Page Load, and we'll set this to 3 seconds. Finally, switch to the Advanced Rules tab, and under Show Up to X Times, we'll set this to 1, ensuring that the pop-up only shows the once. Now save and close, and your pop-up is ready for your store. If we now open our store in a new window, and wait a few seconds, you'll see that the pop-up shows. We can fill in the form, and once we select Sign Up, the pop-up disappears and we are free to continue browsing. Pop-ups are a powerful marketing feature for any website and the Elementor Pop-Up Builder is a valuable toolkit which allows you to create a diverse collection of pop-ups for your site and allows for extensive configurations which go way beyond the scope of this lesson. Be sure to check out our dedicated tutorial by following the link in the video description for more information. Now that we've learned how to create a pop-up for our store, let's take a look at WooCommerce's featured products. Featured products are a great way to promote specific items on your website and are extremely fast and easy to set up. Once you have set up some featured products, you can then easily display them throughout your website using the products widget, just like we have here on the homepage of our website. There are two ways to set up a product as featured in WooCommerce, and both are done on the products page, so let's head there now. The first method, and likely the most simple way, is to select the star in the featured column. Doing so will reload the page, and as you can see, this product now has a solid star and is officially now considered a featured product. The second method is to select the quick edit option. Here we can use the checkbox to indicate if we would like this product to be featured. Be sure to save your changes once you've made any amendments. Now let's choose two other products to be featured. Ok great, now that we've selected some products to be featured, let's see how to display them on our website. Open up the home page in the Elementor Editor first of all, and then scroll down to this section, just below our hero image. Search for, and drop in the products widget. Don't worry about the styles for this widget just yet, we'll fix that soon. But for now, switch over to the Query tab, and under Source, select Featured. And as you can see, the four products that we've just set as featured are now showing. Let's now fix the styling, but rather than manually adjusting the styles to match the rest of our website, we can achieve this in a much more efficient way. We previously styled our products widget when we created our shop templates, so let's open that template into a new tab, right click the products widget, and then select copy. Now back on our homepage, 
right click the product widget and then select paste styles. Wow, how easy was that? If we now visit our homepage, you can see the four featured products are now showing in a prominent position. Using featured products on your store is an easy and efficient way to promote specific products in unique locations. Experiment with different combinations and locations until you find the perfect setup for your store. In the final part of this lesson, we're going to create a dedicated sales page which sells only one product. It's common for website owners to create dedicated sales pages when selling products like ebooks, courses, or specialist items. Doing so provides a great user experience for the visitor as it allows you to provide a tailored experience designed specifically for the targeted product or service. On our website, we've created this sales page which is directly linked to a digital ebook of recipes from the bakery. We provided some sample recipes to entice the user in, a product description, and then an add to cart button. And as you can see, selecting the add to cart button takes the user straight to the cart. Let's jump into the Elementor editor and check out just how we added this product to our page. As you can see, we pre-created this page to display our header image, text, as well as our sample recipes. If we keep scrolling, you'll see that we have an empty column which is ready for our product to be added. Let's search for and drop in the product widget. And just like we did before when creating our featured products area, we're going to copy the styles from a previously created product widget to save us time with the styling. Open up any template or page which is currently using this widget, copy the widget, and then paste the styles onto the product widget on our sales page. Now adjust the columns and rows to one, as we would only like to display one product on this page. Let's now switch to the Query tab, choose Manual Selection under Source, and then search for our recipe ebook. OK, great, things are really starting to take shape. Let's now make some additional style adjustments. Switch to the Style tab and add 75 pixels of padding to all sides in the box area. Apply a box shadow, and then set the background to white. Let's now update our page and test it out. Fantastic, our sales page is now complete and ready for us to drive traffic to. Learning a few basic marketing techniques can really push your store to the next level. Elementor and WooCommerce really are the perfect combination. By using these tools together, you have everything you need to create an amazing online store for any type of business. From the ease of the initial setup and configuration to the ability to create all of your shop-based templates and products, Elementor and WooCommerce are a great duo. During this course, we've covered all aspects associated with building an online store with Elementor and WooCommerce, and you now have the knowledge and skills required to make a success of this. Be sure to share your shop creations with us by posting your website links in the comments below. Thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tutorials and courses.